Today on What It's Like, 1948 Chevy Fleetmaster Woody Wagon, the last of the real wood wagons. But before getting into all of it, I'm Jay. Welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we cover the lost and forgotten classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that tend to get overlooked. Dive in deep with specs, button switches, and knobs. And most importantly, we show what these cars are like. If that sounds like a channel that you will totally dig, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. This absolutely gorgeous 1948 Chevy Fleetmaster Woody Wagon is currently for sale at Classic Auto Mall, which is the largest automotive consignment dealership in the northeastern region of the United States with over 850 cars for sale when recording this episode. And get this, anybody can go there. It is free admission. For more information, pricing, and pictures pertaining to this 1948 Chevy Fleetmaster, click the link below after the show. 1948 Chevy model lineup consisted of three model series as well as a truck line. They built half ton trucks all the way up to the commercial series trucks. These series may not be in any particular order. Style Master Series was available in four models, the Sport Sedan, Town Sedan, Club Coupe, Business Coupe. Fleet Line had two models, Sport Master and the absolutely gorgeous Aero Sedan. The Fleet Master Series came in five models, Sport Sedan, Town Sedan, Club Coupe, Cabriolet, and the Station Wagon. Chevy made Woody Wagons from 1939 to 1948. After that, they were called Tin Woodies in painted metal to look like wood, but they were actually made of metal. With that said, there are some Chevy Woody Wagons out there that predate 1939. They were built either by coach builders or outside vendors, but not Chevy themselves. Chevy themselves didn't build wagons until 1939. 1948 is a carryover design, more or less, that predates back before the war. 1942 on top, 48 on the bottom, starting in the front. The same overall shape. Actually, let's go back one more year to 1941 because the 1942 are so similar. It's really only the grills have changed and maybe some various side molding, but the overall body and shape is the same. So 41 on the top, 48 on the bottom. The grill is totally different and different shapes. The nose looks bigger on the 48. The 41 has side markers above the the headlights, which the 48 does not have. Also, there is a trim line on the 41 hood section where the 48 doesn't have. Turn signals and or running lights have been moved lower on the 48. The 41 has a simpler bumper design. Moving to the side profile, the 48 looks longer than the 41. And in my opinion, the 41 looks a bit smushed at this angle. 48 has longer fenders. Rear fenders look the same though, just maybe a slightly different gas filler placement and the gravel guard design. Moving to the rear, I couldn't find the right angle, but the biggest difference is the single brake light on the 41. Moving to the dash region. So just check this out. They have the same exact layout, but the gauge faces are different. Which do you like better in the comment section below? Moving on to specs, 207 and a half inches long, 73.4 inches wide. It rides a wheelbase of 116 inches. It weighs 3,428 pounds. Price, $2,000, which is equivalent to you. Spending $24,827.39 in the year 2023. Roughly the same equivalent as buying, say, a 2023 Mitsubishi Outlander for roughly the same money. Total, 1948 Chevy production was 696,449 units, of which the Fleetmaster wagon was 10,171 units. Moving on to engines, only one engine on offer, 216 and a half. Cubic inch displacement overhead valve, inline six, 3.5 liters. It's good for 90 brake horsepower, 3,300 RPM, 174 pound feet of torque at 1,100 RPM. Compression, six and a half to one, features four main bearings when mated to a three speed manual transmission, which was the only transmission on offer, zero to 60, a brisk 24.7 seconds, but it is still faster than a Volkswagen Beetle. That does 0 to 60 in 33 seconds, just for the record. Theoretical top speed, 73 miles per hour. Average fuel consumption is 12.4 miles to the gallon. Let's talk styling. Look at all the bright work in the front here. Notice this comes to a beak, not a beak, but more or less a point here. 
Look at this. It's almost like a cross shape. How cool. Overriders with connecting bar. The bumpers also curve. Turn signals and or marker lights. This one they chose to paint the bezels the same color, but I believe that these should have been chromed. If I'm wrong in the comment section below. Look at how far the fenders sit down. But notice there's a bit of a valley here. This peaks up a wee bit. Big nose bulge here in the center. And check out this impressive hood ornament with the plastic piece. Coming down here, nice antenna. Windshield wipers, notice they have their own little kind of pedestals that they rotate from. Cow vent. Look at the angle of the windshield. Has nice drip rails. And this. Chevy always had this one that came off. My 52 Chevy truck has this. The material feels like a canvas style material. Coming down the side here, look at how massive this fender is. It goes all the way back to the door region. Look at how all of this wood fits together. I mean, it took a master craftsman to make something like this. So coming back down the side, just look at drip rails. They go clear to back. Look at all the fitment. Gas filler cap is on the passenger side or right hand side. Look at how this is all together. Gravel guard. Coming to the rear, notice it only has half bumpers and they are curved. Half bumpers, of course, because the spare tire is behind this cover. The rear tail lights. Don't they look like hooves of an animal? Either a donkey or a horse. Getting in the rear, we can't drop the tailgate because the car is too close, but we can open it. I love this chrome piece and or stainless that comes back, runs the whole middle of the body. Just take a look at all that woodwork going on. For those that don't know, I build furniture as a hobby and it's just really interesting to see how people did it back in the day. Look at how these doors kind of curve out. Before getting inside, just look at the door handles and how they're designed. Also notice the hinges for the rear doors are right here. Look at how this door is designed. I always think that's so cool. And it, we're not going to get in the driver's side door. It's too close to the wall over there. Everything that's going on with that door is also going on with this door. There is an armrest. This is all wood. Down here, this feels like a vinyl material. The seats feel almost like bus seats. Like ever remember like riding on a school bus? They feel like the same material. Door handle to get out. Window crank for the window. And that's how it operates. Vent windows are really big. You have to unlock it first, of course. And then you use the crank to open it. And that's how it that's how it operates. Door frame is wood. And look at how it's all pieced together. It's really hard to make a shape to curve wood like this. I can speak from experience. 
And every time I've ever tried to curve something, it always broke. <laughs> but just look at how all of that is just fitted in there. Even the frame is wood. Here's what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person over the hood looks like. I love the over the hood view of this wagon. It's absolutely incredible, especially with the whole dash ensemble and the two-tone steering wheel. Underneath, there is tons of room. I have enough room to move my hand freely. On to the button switches and knobs, starting on the left and moving right. Gasoline gauge, coolant temperature, headlights, located just below that, it meter, oil pressure, speedometer with odometer inside of it. The switch right above the speedometer is for the windshield wipers. Ashtray, clock, key, hand throttle, radio with radio controls, choke, and lighter. Up above, sun visors. Here's my hand for reference, they're really nice sun visors. Nice rear view mirror, which has the daytime nighttime feature. That has to be rare for the 40s. Over here, another sun visor. And just look at the headliner here. And then it goes to beautiful teak wood the whole way back. Nice dome white there, which is controllable by the switch. On to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is the glove box in question. Look at that glove box. Look at how huge it is. It's so big that the camera will fit in like that. And it fits. Getting in the rear door. So notice it's a lot like the front door, only it doesn't have an armrest and it opens a full 90 degrees. It's all trimmed in wood. It is constructed of wood, I should say. And that's what it looks like. This is the door handle to get out. This is the window crank for the big window. And it doesn't go all the way down. It goes most of the way down. Here's what it looks like inside. Notice this is like, oh look, it's even step up. So this is one level and this is another level, totally different level. And the seat is only half a seat so that you could have access to the rear seat. Yeah, I guess you can use that as storage. Here is what the front looks like from the center seat. Let's take a real quick gander at the greenhouse. Going around this way. Here's what the view looks like to the rear, the very third row seat, I should say, and visibility out the back. Also, just look at that roof. I absolutely love it. This is what I look like sitting in the center row got tons of headroom tons and tons of headroom I have tons of knee space like here's my hand here's what the view looks like from the third row you can definitely see the roof a whole lot more this is what my knee situation looks like because the floor is higher back here than it is up there the seat profile is a lot it's more straight up back here too I got knee space. It's just not comfortable for somebody that's six foot tall. What I look like sitting in the third row. I got tons of head space. I just wish that I wasn't so tall. It's a very, it's not very comfortable if you're tall to sit back here. But if you're a kid, this would, this would be perfect. Here's what the seat profile looks like. It's rather upright, but the bottom doesn't dip down so far back here. So it is a rather comfortable seating position. I think the middle row and the first row is the most comfortable. The third row, it's, look at how the seat is profiled. The seat bottom dips down in the rear more than it does in the center row. And the floor is a lot higher. 
so it's not so comfortable. This window slides open, but you, you have to unlock it, which is right here. And then, so check that out. So the rear passengers have their own window. This is the window for the center row. see how that mechanism caught it won't slide open unless it unless this is pushed down so we released the hood from the inside there is a secondary catch right directly in the center and you pull it towards you look at that overhead valve 216 I absolutely love the gas bowl Reminds me of childhood. We have a 52 Farmall Cub that had that. Super cool. Batteries right there. Oil bath air cleaner with a single downdraft carburetor. On the positive side, mechanical parts in great supply, strong club activity and interest. First and second row space. There is tons of space no matter what seat you sit in, but the third row is just not comfortable for a six foot tall adult. It would be perfect for kids though. Lots of window options that open to allow air from outside in to the cabin. Cal vent, huge glove box, epic headliner. Wood bodies are just so cool. Against it, wood body maintenance and upkeep is ongoing. Expensive to restore, especially if the wood is gone. 216 can be gutless and feel underpowered. Seats are very utilitarian and they feel like school bus seats. The seats, they can feel like heated seats in the summertime and cold seats in the wintertime. And with the third row in place, there is next to no space for storage. Unless of course you have a trailer or you strap stuff to the roof. Would you rather paper or plastic, rice or chow mein? Two scenarios today. Would you rather have a 1948 Woody or a 1948 Chevy Woody or a 1948 Plymouth Woody? I'm going to leave this here for a minute. If you need more time, feel free to pause the video. Moving on to the second scenario. Which episode would you guys like to see next? This one would be airing Monday. And whatever you guys pick, will be previewed in tomorrow's episode, which would be Sunday. 1930 Franklin, which was a highly requested air-cooled car. Or 1936 Pierce Arrow 1602 sedan. Or 1948 Nash Ambassador Custom Cabriolet. So feel free, vote in the comment section below. I might put this in the community tab as well for anybody that did not see this episode for their voice to be heard as well. I'm really interested to see what you guys want to see on Monday. On to name that tune. First person to get both the name of the band and song title. First person to do both will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. If you'd like to get in touch with me, shoot me a comment in the comment section below or check out our Facebook group that correlates with this YouTube channel. And honestly, that's the easiest way to contact me is find me on Facebook and shoot me a message. If you don't have Facebook and would like to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, shoot me an email. All of that information will be linked in the description. Just know I appreciate all of the support. And until next time, here's some scenes for our next episode. 1946 Hudson pickup truck. That's what's next on what it's like. Tune in Sunday at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time to catch that episode. And until then, toodaloo! If I should call you up, invest a dime, and you say you belong to me, ease my mind. Imagine how the world could be so very fine with us being together.